It's unboxing day. Apple's new studio display has arrived, so let's get to it. But before we can do that, I need to box up my old LG Behemoth. Let's get that taken down to make room on the desk for the new studio display and walk you through why I upgraded. I've had this LG Ultrafine 5K display since they were released in late 2016, and it has served me pretty well over those five years. But as I'm sure you've heard, there are a number of problems with this display, and I am so glad to finally be able to get rid of it and switch to an Apple branded monitor. So let's tear down the setup, box it up so I can sell it to help fund the cost of the new display. Let's go. Now, you may be wondering what this is, and basically it is just a metal box that I can put the monitor on, make it a little bit higher, as well as help hide the hub and extra cables and stuff like that. And my plan is, my hope, I should say, that I won't need to use this with the new studio display, which was a major selling feature for me. But before I get my hopes up too much on that front, let's make sure I don't need it. As part of the process for selling this, I'm gonna need to rip off this LED monitor strip that I just used to add some backlight to my monitor to help relieve some eye strain. Their one-time use thing I've tried reusing in the past, but the process of taking them off stresses the connections and they don't work as reliably afterwards. That's why I was pretty aggressive in ripping off just now. No point in keeping it. Nice and clean. One of the many minor inconveniences of this display was that it never sat perfectly level. The display was always crooked and the stand didn't support it very well. So there was always lots of jiggling going on. Let's get this in the box so that I can finally get to the studio display. So excited about this. I've been waiting for a 5K display from Apple for so long. A reasonably priced 5K plus display because the XDR was way outside of my needs and definitely outside of my budget. It's always helpful to keep tech boxes just in case you resell them. Uh, unfortunately, I've been storing this big box in the back room for the past five years, but it comes in handy. Now we just have to figure out how I'm gonna ship this thing. But that doesn't matter because this is where it gets really fun. Went to get a pocket knife, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised that it doesn't look like I'm gonna need that. Nice little pull tab right here. Ooh, that was nice. And here we are. Finally, Apple's 5K display. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so not so exciting at first glance, but is this upside down? Oh, it's like it, it is upside down. Who did this? Okay, so that was a bit weird. Oh, the handle is on the bottom of the display. Oh well, doesn't matter. This is what matters. Save this for 10 years from now. But let's take it over to the desk. Okay, I guess I'm ready to talk now. 
As far as which configuration of the studio display I chose to go with, I went kind of all out on it. I got the fancy raise and lowering stand because one of my main complaints of Apple monitors is just how incredibly low they are. The LG was great in that regard and that the stand would raise, but as you saw, I had to put something underneath it anyway, just because at top height, it got extra wobbly on top of its already wobbliness. Whereas the Apple Studio display has this, unfortunately, like three or $400 more expensive stand, but it works really, really well to raise and lower it and even at max height, it is very sturdy. So I knew I was gonna go for that right away. I also chose to go for the nano texture display because I have bright windows right over there and I like to keep the shades open so that I can get some nice sunlight in here. Unfortunately, if I do that and I have a glossy display, there's lots of reflections. This will be my first nano texture display from Apple. Not really sure what to expect. On first look here, the text does look a bit more fuzzy than I would like, but I'll see if I get used to it. Now, besides having that awesome Apple engineering and industrial design, which was going to make it an immediate purchase for me, it's the thing that I've been waiting five years for. There are three things I was really excited for when it came to this display. First of all, the USB-C ports on the back of the display. Now, as you see here, there are three USB-C ports in addition to the Thunderbolt port, which drives the display. Now, the LG Ultrafine had those as well, but they were incredibly flaky. I had to have them replaced at one point because they completely stopped working. And as it is now, they frequently drop down to USB 2 data speeds, which means the only thing I can really plug into them is my keyboard. So having those three extra ports really built in and be usable now might mean I'll be able to eliminate my hub that I was using before. In addition to that, this monitor has a webcam built in, which features Apple's really cool like zoom in, zoom out, pan around to follow faces feature that makes it kind of a blast to use when you have a large family or doing zoom calls with family on the other side of the world, which we do from time to time. And the final thing are the new mic and speakers. Now, usually I'm wearing my AirPod Pros all day long for Zoom calls. However, I do like to take these out of my ears from time and listen to something without, you know, having these shoved in my ears all day long. And for that, up until now, I've had these desktop speakers on my desk, and I am sure they give much better sound than will come out of Apple's studio display but I don't really care for sound quality. Most of the stuff I listen to is spoken audio, either YouTube videos, audiobooks, or some such like that, podcasts, yeah, you know. And when I do listen to music, like I said, I'm not an audiophile, I don't really care about having the perfect quality. And so if the sound quality coming from the studio display is good enough, then that means I can get these speakers out of my desk, which will be fantastic. So on that note, how about we test out these speakers to see how they perform compared to my desktop speakers. Now I'm sure the sound quality isn't going to come through, but you'll just have to take my word for it on the results of this test. So first up are the desktop speakers. But before we get to that, I picked up this adorable little teapot the other day, and... And now we're gonna switch to studio display. So let's do that in... But before we get to that, I picked up this adorable little teapot the other day, and... I want to make some tea. Okay, I'm not sure if you picked up on that or not, but the studio display definitely produces sounds that are a lot more tinny to my ear than dedicated desktop speakers, as to be expected. Uh, for audio, for a video like this, I don't really think it matters, but I'm gonna do a couple more tests and see if I am a stick with that or not. You see, work and motivation are a cycle. Work leads to motivation, motivation leads to work, which in turn, leads to motivation. Yeah, the studio display definitely produces a very tinny sound, and that is something that I'm probably never going to care to listen to music from, but I think it's good enough for me to get these speakers off my desk. If there is anything that I really care about sound-wise, I will probably throw in my AirPod Pros or maybe even a pair of headphones and listen to it that way, or, you know, possibly even the HomePod Mini. But the results of this test say I think I'm gonna pack the speakers and see if I live with that for a couple of months. And if it sounds great, well, they'll be headed to eBay as well. Now, the final test I want to perform is on that webcam because there were early reports that the webcam quality was not up to Apple's usual standard in that regards, which has been pretty fantastic when it comes to the iOS devices. 
Now, as you can see, if you're looking at this display, this webcam quality is pretty bad. I'm very pasty looking, it's quite a bit blurry. The good news, though, is that Apple has said because this has the A13 chip built into it, they will be able to update this via software and they have promised that better quality will be coming. Though, as with everything, don't buy based on future promises. Buy based on what is the quality of the display now and this webcam is lacking. The good news is I always have my Z9 connected to the computer and I use that as a webcam where we'll probably just save this for those family Zoom calls where the quality doesn't matter so much, but that center stage feature is kind of cool where we can track the little heads in the family as they come and go and so family across the world can just see everyone in their large family. In summary, yes, this is an incredibly expensive display starting at $1,600. However, the really only competitor with the similar specs of having that 5K 27 inch panel are that LG UltraFine for $1,300. That $300 price difference for this Apple industrial design built in speakers that are pretty decent quality, though tinny, that webcam that is even though it's terrible, is better than the LG Ultrafine. And USB ports in the back that actually work make it, I think, definitely worth it. And I'm so excited to have an Apple monitor on my desk once again. Now it's time just to tear out those speakers and get everything set back up to make this a real production environment once again. Till next time, bye.